everybody, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Sniper Legends of Italy by Exocrate Games. They did the game British vs. Pirates. This is a single player to three player cooperative game in which you're going to be controlling a team of snipers going throughout Italy trying to complete missions against, uh, I believe, the there's going to be a uh, few different campaigns I have here to show you, but on the Kickstarter it may have more or less. This is going to be a prototype in which you're going to be seeing a tactics style game. You're going to be moving around the board, hiding in cover, pulling out your sniper rifle or your trusty uh, axe, your trusty knife if you're close enough and taking people out. You're usually going to be either trying to complete certain objectives or attempting to defeat all enemies in a specific region to obtain a specific thing that you need to move on to the next campaign. And uh, you're going to go from one to the next to the next, and they'll get challenging, more and more challenging as you go. Some interesting different types of things that go on in this tactical game, which I will show you down below. But for the most part, complete your objectives and move on, or defeat all your enemies and move on. But you might find it more challenging than you think. Let's go ahead and show you down below. So here we have Sniper Legends of Italy by Exocrate Games. It's set up for three players, or you can play with these three characters yourself if you want. And you're basically going to be trying to complete this specific scenario, which is... Blue Tiger Dolch, that's what it's called. And uh, it's gonna tell you to put your characters over here, it's gonna tell you to put the enemy characters over here, tell you which characters to place where, and where to put certain objective markers as well on the board. Each player is going to get their own character, whether it be Sergeant Cross or Sergeant Swagger or maybe even Sergeant Bishop, as well as their own gun of choice. You might be wanting to use a long range sniper rifle or even a shorter range one that will let you uh, roll more die or have more bonus damage. Every single player is going to be getting these cards here, two of them, they're called supply cards, and they'll be utilized in some way either as an action or to simply discard and use it as maybe a rock that you're throwing somewhere far away or to help you disguise better. There's cards like these so every time you uh, complete an objective card or uh, defeat an enemy you'll be drawing one of these cards here that will do something interesting could be that they'll bombard you with an aerial strike or maybe a supply drop in from the ally side will drop down and help you there's multiple different boards and both of them are front and back that will pertain to each of the different scenarios you'll be playing throughout the campaign and here's another board here front and of course back that play differently quite differently they do uh, they use things like water and other things let me put this over there all right, as well as, of course, the rulebook, which illustrates the campaign and how you go from one to the next to the next. This is the gear cards, and this is your turn reference card. Additional characters, additional objectives, tokens like Mussolini satchel tokens that you can use for explosive devices, scientists that will attempt to walk across the board, and you have to stop to gain bonuses, and, of course, the enemy characters. All the lives of the enemies and your own characters will start at six, and all bullets for your characters will start at six. Each of the characters are going to be placing with these green bases to begin with, and then red bases later, so make sure you have your red bases set aside so you can play. Once you've set the entire board, each of your characters with their guns and the two different supply cards, you're ready to begin the game, and I'll show you a little bit about Blue Tiger uh, Dolch, and whether or not we'll complete this one. We'll do a couple rounds here to show you how it plays and explain the board a little better, so let's go ahead and dig it down below. I'll show you this, and then we'll come up and I'll give you my review. So back to the Dolch now. Here we have the three-player setup, or depending on the number of players you're playing with, but they have the three characters there. We have, of course, their player boards. We have their weapons and or things they can use as opposed to one of their actions. All their cards are set up and all the enemies are over here along with we're going to be rolling our die. Now, everything's set up, and so our objective is either to accomplish these mission objectives here by simply turning them over and then either rolling to complete them or discarding cards from our hand uh, in order to successfully complete them as well. And there are going to be certain symbols on there that we can achieve. Now, it's pretty easy how this works. So we'll start with these guys here and select them one at a time in any order that we'd like to move and then shoot. If you move into a green area, that's going to give you a plus two bonus for your green area located over here, which is basically a way in which people aren't going to see you if they are in range of seeing you. Then you're going to have this yellow area here, which is a defensive area, which means that your defense here is going to get plus two. 
Uh, so as you can see, there's movement for three, and then we have a seven here for disguise or hidden, and then a seven for defense. Our weapons are going to have a range, which is eight, how many die they can utilize, and then their bonus for each of those die. So for instance, if you roll a four and a two, you get a six and a four with these pl this plus two. All the characters have the same function. Supply cards are either going to have a blue symbol on them, illustrating that you can use them once a turn uh, to exchange for an action. So for instance, I wanted to use Crouching walk i would get plus three for my hidden but i only be able to move two squares and i can only use one of these for this specific character here and then if i use something like the stalking knight knife thrust this is a card that i would simply utilize uh, by uh, doing what it says i could also choose to discard it to throw it as a rock or i could discard it as for an objective for a gear over here and it's a good way to hurt some people that are close in close range. So let's go ahead and begin. I'll go ahead and move this character three spaces. This character will also go three. And then this character is going to go three here. Now they're not in range. None of them are in range to see these guys or even hit these guys. Because the highest range character we have is this guy here with eight. And uh, that would be Sergeant Bishop. And it tells you on the little things where he is. So he's right here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Plus, of course, you have these red lines blocking. You're going to have solid red lines that are, first of all, not you're not able to see through them. And they are also blocking line of sight. They're blocking line of sight and uh, you can't... Uh, you can't do anything you like move through them and then you have these ones here which are basically the same red line but now they're dotted which means you can shoot through them because they're not too tall but you're uh, not going to be able to walk over them then there's also the symbol here which is the wind the wind is always going to be in this direction but if you discard a card with the wind symbol in the opposite direction that can give you a boost in your distance when you are shooting your weapons so it's fairly useful to remember this in case you need to discard a card that will uh, change the wind for you help you in a little way um, then there are, I think that's pretty much the main things on this. There's going to be, of course, things like this water train and whatnot, but it's all going to be blocked by this single red line. Okay, so that's it. These guys took their movement, and uh, these guys are all going to activate. And the way all these guys activate is you're going to be rolling a die for each of them, and it tells you on their card what you're going to be rolling in order to successfully move them. And if they don't move, you're going to have to roll them again, unless it specifically says otherwise. The MG34 bunker unit, which is right here, he's never going to move, so he's just going to sit here. He's a character that if he ever does see anybody in his range, he will simply hit that unit. So we're going to go ahead and roll for each of the characters. The Grenadier, we're going to roll for the Salado, and the... Uh, I'm not going to try and say that one. Pa All right, Panzer Gren Grenadier. And then we've got this guy here and then this guy here. And the way it works is if you roll a 1, he's going to, he's, he's going to move north. If you roll a 2, it's east. 3, it's south. 4, it's west. 5, he's not going to move at all. And if it's a six, it will move in one space to the closest one of these soldiers, one of these snipers. So we've got a two here. So one and two, and that's the grenadier. And you can look over here and see, okay, he actually can't move that way. So he's going to go ahead and roll again. That's a one, which make, make him go north. This character is done moving. The soldado is going to go stationary. This character will go north, the panzer. And where are you? He's here, so he has to roll again. Another one. And a five, he's stationary. This character over here, the stormtrooper, has rolled a three, which means he's going to go south. And that's it. All the characters have now moved. After the characters have moved, uh, you're then going to check to see if any of these characters see these units here. When they have the green bases on, that means that they are not... Uh, they're not panicked, they're not worried, they can't see you, they don't know you exist. But if they ever do see you, they're going to be rolling a die to try and spot you. Uh, and if they do succeed in that, they'll actually turn red. Additionally, if you do hit these units, they'll also turn red as well. And any unit within three spaces of that specific unit will also go red. So for instance, if you had a guy right here, and this guy was here and he shot him but didn't actually kill him, this guy would go red, and because he was three spaces next to him, he would go red as well. So it's a good indicator of uh, I'll put you right there of uh, how how people can kind of alert each other. So that is basically how these guys all function. And then after that, it would simply go back to these guys' turn. Um, the only time these guys are going to do anything else is when they choose to attack. They will move two spaces towards the nearest sniper, and then if the 
NPC is within two spaces, they can continue by rolling to check their binoculars, uh, plus a d7 to determine if they can see that specific unit based on these green stats here. So basically, if this character here was actually red, I'll just go ahead and switch him right now so I give you an idea of how it functions. He is going to do his basic movement every turn. And in addition to his basic movement, he'll also perform his attack movement. So for instance, if he were to roll, uh, let's say a two, he would move one space this way. And then because he's red, he will also get to move two spaces towards the nearest one of these guys and then attempt to see them if he can, if he's not being blocked. And then if he successfully sees them, he can attempt to attack them. So that is the relevance for this. So I'll, I'll go ahead and just put this guy over here for now, and we'll just leave him red. These guys are then going to go uh, forward again. They're going to start moving one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Another interesting thing about these green things here is that they actually can block line of sight. So this guy actually can't see him, but if he were to walk in here, he could see him. One, two, and three. And then after these guys have moved, they still are not in range. I think this is this, what's this guy, Sergeant Cross. So that would be this guy over here. He can see four spaces, so he's not he's not there to this guy here. So then we're going to go ahead and roll for all these units again. I'll just go ahead and roll five die, and I'll put them in the order that they get rolled in. So we've got one, three, six, five, six. So Grenadier, one, Soldado is a three. Uh-oh, that's not good. A six uh, for the Panzer, which means he's actually going to move one close one space closest to the nearest player, which would be there. And then we've got this guy here, which is stationary, and this guy here, the Volksgrenadier, is going to move one space closer to the units. And then, of course, because he's red, he'll move an extra two more spaces. And uh, he actually still can't see this guy because he's being blocked by these spaces here. So now it goes back to these guys' turn once again. And we'll go ahead and move this guy into here. Uh, Sergeant Swagger is now within range. One, two, three, and four spaces. He's got a total of six range. He can roll two die, so we'll take two of these d8s. And he's going to roll with a plus four on both of them. All right, that is a seven and a one. A one is always a critical failure. And a seven plus four is going to check the guy's defense. And the Volts guy here, his defense is seven, so he's got seven plus four, which is enough, which would actually take this guy down one damage. Whenever you do one damage to any of the enemy units, not only would you turn them from green to red, meaning that they've uh, awoken or they've, they now wouldn't realize what's going on, you're going to draw one of these supply cards. The other time is when you defeat an enemy, you'll also draw a supply card, and you'll get one for every damage, plus every time you defeat an enemy. So there's a good way you can get a bunch of these here. He moved, and he activated, so he is done now. Now remember, to kill these units, you need to remove them from six to five. But let's actually say that this guy wasn't red now, so we're gonna go ahead and switch it up. This guy was actually green the entire time. And let's go ahead and say that he was right here, and I walked into this bush here and shot him, and instead of rolling a seven, I ended up rolling an eight. If I did that, this character gets a critical success and instantly kills any green character they're aiming at. So in this case, this character would be completely removed from the game. It's basically like an extreme headshot. They weren't noticed, they didn't notice that you were there, and additionally you rolled very well, so you get a benefit of destroying or defeating that character fairly easily. Uh, now that would be that. These characters would move there. One, two, three. So as you can see, he's kind of coming up the back way, coming, coming this way, and this guy's going this way. And that's basically the idea of the game. They're going to keep moving around. They're going to uh, become alerted. The only thing I haven't really showed you is the fact that after you do defeat an enemy, you'll actually draw one of these cards here and do whatever it says. This is a you find a crate of ammo. All, all snipers reload your sniper rifle to a full D6. And because Sergeant Swagger actually did shoot once, he would actually lose an ammo. And in this case, he would refill his ammo after defeating that unit, and everybody else would as well. So you are limit on, uh, limited on ammo. But luckily, it's not a huge problem, because you can discard cards that have an ammo symbol on it. Let's see if I can find one, like this one here. Or if you walk onto an ammo space, you can reload your ammo. And the same goes for health spaces as well. And uh, There's other cards in this deck, and you're going to also draw them when you complete objectives. So let's go ahead and show you objectives. So this guy managed to get over here. He's next to the objective. He's going to flip it over to see what it is. This is Sergeant Cross. So Sergeant Cross is going to check to see if he has any of these symbols here, which are the little mechanical symbols, and he does, which means he can choose to do one of two things. He can either roll a D8 and attempt to get a 7 or higher, or he can discard this stalking knife thrust, 
which is a mechanical symbol on it, and actually complete this objective, and thusly trigger this event to happen. And this is a loot event. You, uh, you find gear on a dead Nazi, and he won't miss it. All snipers draw one gear card and add it to your hand. So every single sniper is going to get a free gear card. Very, very nice. And then you just keep playing. So if you're able to accomplish all of these objectives, and they all have different little things that are required on them, they either have a symbol or a number in which you're going to have to roll. If you get all of these, you're going to finish this objective. The only other way to win is if you knock down all these guys. They're all dead. Uh, the last thing you, can, you should know probably is when a character of yours <laughs> dies... So if I've got, let's just say I've got these guys here and I've got this bunker dude who's pretty nasty because he can do some serious damage. If he kills you, you will get knocked over and you'll stay there until one of your uh, allies gets next to you and attempts to roll to save you by rolling your, uh, one of your numbers here, uh, your plus numbers. I think it's this one here. And if you can roll that, you can get your guy to stand back up. Uh, the other way is if you pass out or <laughs> perish, you can actually go ahead and respawn. The way you're going to lose this game is if all of your snipers get wiped out. The only thing I'm not too certain on is if if you lose one of the guys and he has to respawn, do only these two guys need to die? I'm not too certain on that. I'm fairly, I'm, I think it's... I think that yes if this guy gets knocked out he can come back and respawn but these guys could get knocked out and the only way to uh succumb from that happening or to not suffer that is if this guy was knocked out and you just brought him back then it would not count as a loss of life but you would go ahead and take this board off you would choose the new enemies you would go ahead and flip the board over and you begin the next campaign in the game and you would continue playing the game sniper legends of italy anyway that's the basic idea of the game let's come up and talk about it so let's discuss Sniper. And the first thing I want to say about this game is it reminds me of Metal Gear Solid. I know that's kind of weird because he's a sniper and Metal Gear is usually a close encounter kind of guy. But the way it functions as a tactics game is your objective as sniper is to stay out of sight. And the best ways to stay out of sight are to be as far away as you possibly can, but still be able to see them and have them avoid shooting you or at least put yourself in the best scenario so where you can actually do some serious damage. Now, keeping your enemy units from seeing you or not alert is the most important thing because every time you roll that eight, it feels really good to get that instant kill on an enemy. Now, if they are red and an eight hits, eight is always a critical success, but it's not always guaranteed a kill unless that enemy is not alert. So it has some interesting aspects there. Uh, one thing I didn't fully clarify too is that the cards here, your little uh, gear cards, all the ones that are blue can be stay in front of you and can be used as a in in a, instead of an action, depending on the type of gear card that it is. Weapons, for instance, will it use that weapon instead of your other weapon, and something like camo gear will it use that as opposed to your movement. Uh, but anything else that doesn't have those symbols will be discarded, and they have a multitude of ways of discarding them. I know I expressed that for a stalking knife thrust, you can discard it to throw a rock three spaces away from you, which will get a unit that notices that rock that is a bad guy to move to that space which is kind of a good way of like diverting their attention. There's also the wind that you can discard this card for. If the wind is the opposing side, you can use this card to discard this card to then be able to get a plus one to your range by one. And then of course your objective bonus here. So if you have the objective that is the gears, which in the example I showed you did, you could discard this card for that. And then finally to use the weapon itself, you would have to spend this and discard it, but it is free and it does not count as either your walking or your attack action. You're also not going to get any bonus cards when using these cards. So if you get a gun and you use that gun, you don't get a bonus card for hitting a unit. The only time you get a bonus for hitting a unit is when you use your sniper rifle. So I think that's pretty much all the little extras I want to mention. As well as, of course, all the objectives have different numbers and different symbols on them. They will have you roll or utilize different cards for them. The campaign gets more challenging as you go along. And like I said, my way, my main little complaint in the game is I'm not too sure how you can necessarily lose. Uh, I know how you can lose, but I'm just not sure if the different ways in which you can lose. I think that'd be nice to have a little more clarity on that. But otherwise, the game is a very cool tactics game because you are basically trying to move around and you have two options. Now, trying to defeat all the units is much more difficult than just simply getting the objectives. But getting the objective is challenging too because the units are kind of moving around and how they want to move. And if they ever see you, they can try and spot you and then they're going to do damage to you. The bad guys are 
much more plentiful than you are, and it's very likely that they're going to hit you and do some serious damage to you as well. They are just as healthy as you are and have just the same type of attacks, so you are outnumbered on purpose, and these guys are just kind of wandering around the grounds. Sometimes they're going to move in weird, bizarre ways, like unless just sit there and hang out by the coast for a while, maybe talking to their mom or something like that on the phone, who knows? And so you're going to get the chance to get through certain areas easier than others, and sometimes they're just simply going to try and swarm you because they all happen to roll sixes and they're just slowly moving towards you. The alert guys are even more dangerous because of course not only do they move in their random direction but they also move towards you as well. It's just kind of a bizarre let's say bizarre but it, it's it's nuts basically because you're 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 always high tension. Should I move here? Will they see me next round? Is it worth moving here? Because if this die gets rolled this way, they might move south. And if they're in the south area, they can see me. Also, remembering to check the map. Rocks are... They, they don't block line of sight. They just block movement. So if you're not careful and you walk by a rock and you think you're safe, then all of a sudden an enemy spots you and now you're in deep trouble. You've also got units that are like the Panzer dude who's just able to shoot his machine gun and just walk, and just walk into him and he can just start shooting at you. However, there's certain sniper rifles that have a longer range than that Panzer, which can just go ahead and take him out regardless because that character never moves. So think smart, think S smart, and you'll do just fine in this game. The artwork is solid, the components are nice, it comes with quite a lot of things here as you can see as I showed you, as well as about four scenarios or campaigns. I imagine the Kickstarter campaign will probably have more, but don't quote me on that. You can take a look down below if you're interested. We're going to be reviewing a lot of tactics games. A lot of tactics games are getting pretty popular right now. And this one might just be up your alley as well. I enjoyed this one. It's a nice solo mode. <laughs> Basically, it's a solo mode or up to three player cooperative variant on a tactics game. If you're interested in checking it out, go ahead and take a look down below in the description for Sniper, Legends of Italy, and then, of course, tell me what you think. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out our server videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment as well as take a look at the game. Sniper, Legends of Italy down below in the description. It's on Kickstarter. If you want to go ahead and pick it up, you can. It's a tactical game, one to three players. Cooperative, which you're battling against the enemy, as well as checking out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, does blog posts, giveaways, case blah, 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 and also, go ahead and check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek, and show me how to win a bunch of good little uh, channels there. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. As always, I look forward to delving with you in the grasslands of Italy, fighting the N-words with you. They're not, I don't know if I can say that on YouTube. Probably not, probably not. Next time.